Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Tuesday, November the 24th, and it's approximately 12.38. I'm going to start off with uh, sound saying from Hebrews 4, 16. And it says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The back is coming from Psalm 55, 22, and it says, Cast thy burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Cast thy burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. That is a promise. Okay, we're going to be reading from Galatians um, 6. And the topic here talks about bearing the burdens of others. It also talks about reaping what is sown. So if you sow that which is good, good will come to you. If you sow that which is evil and wicked, that will come to you. And then it speaks about salvation through Christ alone, and it talks about final blessings and exhortations. Um, this is an 18 verse chapter. We have an array of colors here. We have red for discipleship, a quite a bit of it. We have black for sin, olive for commandments, green for love, pink for witnessing, blue for salvation. And we will be reading out of, let's do it out the New International. I am sweating already, Father. All right. I had the heat on, but I turned it off. Let me let me take this to the New International. Okay, and here, excuse me. It talks about. It simply says doing good at all times. When you are um, bearing the burdens of others, you are doing good. If you are ignoring the needs of others, though it may have come to you that that person has a need, you are doing wicked. It makes no difference that you go to church every Sunday. Going to church every Sunday being in a choir has absolutely nothing to do with your deeds. You may go to church all the time, be a member of the choir, but outside of the church you might do much wickedness. Okay, so it used to be a time when people used to go to church all the time that people thought highly of them and um, you could expect that that person was a good natured person, but that is not, it's not what it is anymore. People go to church every Sunday, they're members of the choir, and outside of the church, they live like Satan. That's just the way of the world today. Okay, so in this particular reading, it's 18 verses. And again, I will read it from here. It says, bearing the burdens of others, reaping what is sown, salvation through Christ alone, and final blessing and exhortations, which means encouragement. In this New International Bible, it simply says, doing good to all. Doing good to all. Okay? And that's what it means, all. Whether it is a good person or an evil person, you need to do good to all. It is very easy to do good to those who are good to you, but we must also learn to do good to those who are not so good to us. 
And this is what pleases the Lord when we can do good to those who are not so good to us. That pleases the Lord tremendously. All right. Um, this is an 18 verse chapter, so let's begin. It says here, brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual shall restore him gently. Let's see how it said it's here. Brother, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such. A one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, least thou also be tempted. Okay, here it simply says, Brother, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual shall restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Okay, so be very careful when you see people doing things that are wrong. Don't be a part of what they're doing, but re be, a, be a resolution to them. Be a gentle um, guidance to them. That means you are to let them know that this is what this thing which they are doing is wicked indeed. Be mindful that you, you do not become a part of that wickedness that they're doing. All right. Be mindful that you do not become a part of whatever they are doing if it's wicked indeed. All right. So, brother, if someone is caught in sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently, but watch yourself, or you may also be tempted. Verse 2. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. And see how it says it here. Bear ye one another's burdens and be fulfilled, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Same thing. All right. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. That means that if you see someone in need, you are not to act like you don't see it. You are not to walk away. You are to wait and see if your help is needed before you walk away. That is called carrying each other's burdens. Okay? It is not the sacrifices that our God is pleased with, no. He is pleased when we are obedient to his word. He is pleased when we become our brother or sister's burden carriers. That's what pleases God. Okay, Because he knows your heart and he knows if you have walked away from a person who, who could have needed your help. This displeases God. Okay, we're supposed to mimic Christ in all that we do. All right, carry each other's burden. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Three, if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So don't think so highly of yourself. Uh, let me repeat that. Don't think so highly of yourself. And I'll repeat it here also. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Let's read it from here. Four. This is in black. If a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. It's the exact same wording. Okay. Four. Each one shall test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. Each one shall test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. Five. For each one shall carry his own load. Six. Here is our love for commandment. 
Anyone who receives instructions in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Anyone who receives instructions in the word must share all good things with his instructor. 7. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Okay? Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man weeps what he sows. Amen. Let's read it from here. 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Okay? So if you go around sowing that which is good, goodness will come to you. If you go around sowing that which is wicked and evil, wickedness will come your way. That's the law of nature. The law of God. Alright? Hey. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. You hear that? The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Alright, let's read it from here. Verse 7. For he that soweth, verse 8, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. When you sow to the flesh, you sow to your sinful nature. All right? So when he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. This is the split verse I was telling you about, verse 8. That's the black part. The blue part is this. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. All right. Nine. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So don't give up doing good. Always do good. Even if you don't see anything good coming your way, it will come your way. As surely as I can say, Jesus, it will come your way. So don't faint. Don't give up. Don't get disheartened. Just keep doing good. Okay? And then the Lord will open up the windows of heaven and the bestows of blessings will come upon thee that you are not ready to receive. All right, all right, so let's read it from here. Verse 9, which is read in this Bible. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. And I'll read it from here again. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Ten. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those whose blessing to the family of believers. Therefore, as we, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Amen. Let's read it from here, 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. All right. All right. Uh, verse 11 comes with a subtitle, and it says, Not, com not circumcised, but a new preacher, not circumcised, but a new preacher. All right, 11. See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hands. Well, Paul had an issue with his eyes uh, when he was met in the desert and he was blinded for those two or three days. He never really received his sight completely. He was always struggling with his eyesight after the encounter with Christ in the desert. 
So he did receive his sight, but not entirely. So whenever he wrote something, it was always written in large letterings. And this is what he is admitting here in this verse. It says, that, and I will read it from here. Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hands. Okay. It says here, see what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hands. Twelve. Those who want to make a good impression outwardly are trying to compel you to be circumcised. Those who want to make a good impression outwardly are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the Christ, for the cross of Christ. Those who want to make a good impression outwardly are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. 13. Not even those who are circumcised obey the law. Yes. There are many who are circumcised who don't even believe in God. And there are many who are not circumcised who believe in Christ. So the circumcision of the flesh is not as powerful as circumcision of the spirit. Let me repeat that. Circumcision of your flesh is not as powerful as circumcision of your spirit. All right. Not even those who are circumcised obey the law. Yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your flesh. 14. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. 15. Neither circumcised nor circumcision means anything. What counts is a new creature. All right, let me read that from here. 13. I'll start from 12. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only least they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. 13. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. 14. I'll repeat 14 from here. May I never boast except the, in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to them. 14 here says, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. All right, 15. Neither circumcised nor uncircumcised means anything. What counts is a new creature. 16. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, even to the Israel of God. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, even to the Israel of God. 16. Finally, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. Amen. Finally, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. 18. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, spirit, brother, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brother, amen. And here it says, brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, amen. And that is all 18 verses of Galatians 6, which is the last chapter in Galatians. And I did want to take the time to share one more reading from the newspaper clipping I have gotten. Let's do Weathering the Storm. This was written by Joy Bolton. Weathering the Storms. 
Prayer is an integrate, intricate part of my life. When the COVID-19 pandemic started, I simply continued my daily time of prayer, which includes Bible reading and prayer for miss, missionaries and others around the world. Being grounded in my faith in God before the coronavirus crisis started has carried me through these difficult days because I am old enough to have lived through a variety of hard experiences. I've learned many years ago that the key to weathering the storms of life was found in a daily time of prayer and Bible study. It is in this daily time with God that I am reminded of His love, presence, guidance, wisdom, and blessings. Yes, I have a discouraging day from time to time, but overall, I am too blessed to be distressed from Joy Bolton. Thank you very much, Miss Joy Bolton. That was a beautiful prayer to share with the newspaper. Thank you very much for joining us here at Spiritual Water. As always, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you and all those you love. And may the will of God for your life come from thee. Until the next time, thank you very much for listening. God loves it when you listen to his word. He loves it even more when you take the time out of your busy day to spend a little time with him. And in the meantime, have a wonderful day. Don't forget, be kind, be gentle, be helpful, and be wise. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day.